Space Theater. So I'm uh, actually playing a, an old favorite of mine um, called Sudeki. Um, Sudeki is not a game I have ever beaten. Um, this originally came out on the Xbox and I was really upset they didn't make it backwards compatible for the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One. And then I discovered that I could get the game on my computer, so that's what we're currently playing this on. Um, so this is another game that's got uh, its own voices, so I'm not going to do a lot of talking, but this is a fun RPG, and I haven't played this in a decade. So we're going to, at least, and so we're going to, uh, we're going to play this and kind of experience it together. So here we go, new game. Oh, I'm excited. Look at these wonderful Xbox graphics. That actually is like super cutting edge for the day. And you know, I wouldn't even want to see it updated. It's kind of like playing, um, playing the original Fable. You know, but yeah, the graphics are kind of. You know, they are what they are, but they're just, uh, they're still charming and cartoonish, and they, they really did the best with what they had, and, uh, you know, it's, like, look at that, look at that, that lens flare. And like any good protagonist, you start off sleeping, basically every time you play a Zelda game. Whoa, watch it, doll. What's the big hurry? Sorry, Elko. Tilly, I'm late. I'm really late. Oh. My apologies, ma'am. Ah, oh, you clumsy ox. Watch your step. Whoa. I haven't the time to wait around for you. You're supposed to be a soldier. Now listen up, for I'm about to change your lives forever. I'm gonna make men of you if it's the last thing I do. Now, you might be asking yourself, why did you join the army? Well, I'll tell you. So then, Yemi, what's on the agenda today? Elko switches on his tower this afternoon, but you promised we could visit my mother today? Ooh, lucky me. I get to spend all day in a village full of old men. You must have been very bored growing up. I had a lovely time. Only boring people get bored. Really? Well, I was hoping for something a little more exciting, that's all. Perhaps a troop inspection. <laughs> Wake up, soldier! Haven't you heard a single word I've said? Today is another beautiful day to learn the art of killing. The elite guard treats an enemy's death as an art form. You will learn to cut closer and thrust without mercy. What now? General Arlo, may I have a quick word? This had better be good. I don't need to remind you these soldiers are on active duty. It's just a little VIP visit. Perhaps you could rustle up a display? Please? This isn't the circus, it's the army! It is by Her Majesty's request, General Arlo. Is it? Then I guess I'll have to make another exception. Who is she? Her name is Buki. It's her tribe that hold the crystal I was telling you about. Ah, Honorable Buki, we are in luck as it happens. The General here was just putting the elite guard through their paces. General? Yes, Miss uh, Buki. Uh, now, if you'll step this way, you can watch as we run over the basics of swordsmanship. Tal, you may begin. Okay. I, I love the characters in this, and I love that they're they're silly, and the game kind of knows that it, they're silly. Yep. Okay. 
gotta get reacquainted with the controls. of swordsmanship. Remember, your sword is your best friend. As you can see, Miss Buki, if you love your sword, you can keep the whole world at arm's length. You fight well, but a Shadani warrior does not hide behind the sword. I like to see the fear in their eyes and smell the sweat on their brow. There is no substitute for a good sword in your hand. <laughs> I <Slow> forgot. <laughs> and cumbersome, like all men. I forgot how terrible his voice was. <laughs> good ridden. Now Let's listen go. up, man. He's like, like he's trying to be Sylvester Stallone. Intelligence suggests the Aclorians will darken our skies again soon. Now, we don't understand their motives, but it's down to us to try and stop them from entering Illumina. Aquarians employ guerrilla tactics and show no respect for the rules of engagement. They will use every dirty trick they can, and that includes the use of light spawn creatures. These monsters take many forms, so you'd better be prepared for anything. The enemy attacks in small berserker groups, and the Queen has decreed we are to take no prisoners. Now, there's a lot of country to cover out there, so make sure you all have your own map to navigate with. I think this game was actually my first exposure to... that I realized exposure to um, steampunk as a uh, style. Um, you know, Final Fantasy was always kind of a steampunk-ish thing, but when I played Final Fantasy as a kid, I didn't know steampunk. I didn't know it, I didn't know it had a name that it was called steampunk. But now, you know, seeing this, this is, you know, I think the first time I can remember seeing like this really cool blend of medieval and technology. Um... Tao, you better get yourself a map of the wilderness before you go on duty. And go to Kamo's shop in the northeast corner of the marketplace and pick one up. Maps are free to soldiers by order of the Queen. Thanks. I can find my way there. Oh. Oh, the good old floating book in town lets you save. Okay, I'm gonna go to Camo Shop, which I believe is over here. Learn the legends of Sudeki, my son. We're just gonna loot the random, you know, treasure chest. Kamo's Emporium. Welcome to Kamo's. No kids, no smoking, no drinking, no touching, and no credit! Now, how may I help you? <laughs> All right. Uh, it's cheapskates like you that make me work longer hours. Oh, I didn't realize getting me a free map was making you work more. I don't know if I can buy anything. Um, I have six of those, apparently. Mm -hmm. Let's get some stuff for poison. Always good to have in an RPG. Okay. Just 
gonna come into your shop and break things, don't mind me. Hey, Tal, the alarm bells are ringing. There are reports of skirmishes on the road to New Brightwater. Arlo wants you to lead a patrol across country in case Princess Ailish gets caught up in the action. I like how you're this terribly late soldier all the time, but they want you to lead a patrol. <laughs> I can unravel the mysteries of the universe through the medium of puppetry. It may sound far-fetched, but don't underestimate the magic of theater. Eh? This will at least give us some backstory on what's going on. Of the gods and demigods created from the void, Tetsu heir to the realm of Omnium, received a gift with which he toyed. Sudeki and all its subjects would worship him alone, yet still he longed for another god to share his celestial home. So drawn from him his crystal skin, another child was born. Yet slicing one, though good and true, the light from dark was torn. At first the brothers celebrated and shared their world in faith, but then the dark grew powerful and love was laid to waste. The dark gave swing to the selfish twin, and he banished out his brother. Now weakening, the good twin fled in search of help from others. Of animal men, one wise and fair, his tribe they turned to flee, while human beings hid their feelings, save the heroic three. T'was separation brought us here. How selfish was my wish. So unity will be our new goal. We fight, the angel hissed. They fought the beast so powerful and forced him to give in. Then, as battle silenced, a rage came o'er the twin. The world was torn asunder, the subject split in two. Unable to reach the afterlife, death drifted in the gloom. And then the magic ceased, silence took control. An age one thousand years would pass before these kin would toil. And of the four who bravely fought, their fate was not to end. For time would tell to save from hell we will need these friends again. Now is the hour that my brother wakes. Thank you, my friend, and do come again. So I remember the first time I saw in the Deathly Hallows a uh, Harry Potter movie. Um, when they're describing the, th the tale of the three brothers. Um, and it was done in that animation style they did in the movie. I remember thinking that it reminded me a lot of this animation style, which I had seen years previous uh, for telling that story. Okay. I like that it lets you get to the action pretty quickly. You know, it's some games, you know, really draw out the opening cutscenes. And uh, one of my favorite games, admittedly, is, is one that does that. Uh, Lost Odyssey It's one that does that. Oh, wow. Yeah, not fast enough for that. I don't think. Barely made it. In the bag. I have no idea what the wolf totem does. And you know, this was so. I don't remember how well received overall this game was. Um, I remember getting it because I was really into the art style at the time, and I was really into RPGs. Um, you know, obviously a huge Final Fantasy fan, and uh, 
I remember getting this game and my sister and I, and I hope she watches this playthrough because it was just a, this was a fun game we both really enjoyed playing. Um, I always really liked his armor. I loved the way that looked. I loved the concept of, you know, having, instead of having a shield, having one armored arm uh, with the other arm free to use the sword. Um, but I just, I just thought it looked good. I remember wanting to build, being in my very early teens and wanting to build uh, that armor. Maybe I will someday. Maybe, maybe I'll cosplay this character someday. And I could be talking to people, but honestly, it's um, the NP. If, if memory serves, the NPCs in this are just exposition more than they're actually like helpful. Um, and I'm, I'm eager to get back into the action of the game. And I also like that it's a, it, what appears to be a pretty seamless map. You know, it's it's not having to load every other spot, um, which that can be that can be kind of tricky for a game to do. Um, I remember the first time I saw a continuous General Arlo and the others have already gone. Fo yeah, I remember the first time I saw a game. I think it was Half Life or Half Life Two. I think it, was, it might have been the first Half Life. Um, where the screen didn't go black during loading. There was always, like, it was all continuated. Um, even if it was a loading screen, like, it didn't black out. There was still something happening. Um, and one scene in particular that sticks out is, like, you're getting on a tram and going down a hallway on the tram. And it would just continue, and it would load while you were in that scene, but there's still something to look at. Man, the time has come to put your training to good use. I want every piece of Aquarian scum removed from the area before sundown. Sir, yes, sir. March to New Brightwater, and make sure the road is secure. Tao, take charge of the two rookies, and we'll rendezvous in New Brightwater. Sir. Alright, now let's see if I can keep these guys alive. I don't remember if they can die or not, honestly. I feel like they can, but maybe they can't. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Of course, you know, the goal is not to, you know, get them killed. This game is also really good about keeping you on a, a track. It's not really open world, which in an RPG you don't necessarily... You want a good mix, I think. Oh, the humanity. Charge! And of course you have the combat moves that are physically Possible, as with any good anime style RPG.
I would have to look because this game, um, as far as like something about the art, both the artwork style as well as the, um, the just the color and the overall look of the game, reminds me a lot of the uh, Hobbit game that came out uh, around the same time. Um, I wonder if there's any of the same people who worked on this that worked on that because that was another game. And maybe I'll maybe I'll do that one on the channel sometime. And that was another game that was just a lot of fun, and it came out of course well before the Hobbit movie um, was even a, a thing. And uh, so it follows the book pretty closely, which I think is kind of neat. Um, oh, I do remember that being another feature I liked about this is that uh, you know you're done with combat. Um, when uh, you put your sword away. So it's just kind of a... I don't know. It's just an element of the game, I like, I guess. It doesn't really serve a purpose. Okay. Oh, and... That is some impressive physics. Like, how far is that pitchfork jammed into the ground to support his weight like that without falling over? I mean, that's it. That's number one. It's a massive pitchfork. Why am I discussing the physics of that? <laughs> oh, man, this game is so much fun. It's also really fun because usually on the channel I play games that I I know really really well um, and have beaten many times, so it's really rare for me to uh, go after a game that, even if I know it, I haven't played it forever, so there's so much of this that's like, oh yeah, it looks familiar, but I don't remember specifics. I couldn't have even told you characters' names. Arlo wants the area cleared at any cost, but he hasn't seen that monster yet. What monster? He seriously sounds like Sylvester Stallone. Or, like, somebody trying to do a bad impression of Sylvester Stallone. This is another one of those games where you do get rewarded for, you know, running around. Maybe we're going to here in exchange for gifts from Karista. So, I got one totem earlier. I received an orb. Bigger. So it permanently raises HP by 100. Let's use that. I'm really 
bad at blocking in games like this. I really should be blocking more. The hardest part about this is keeping the rhythm of the attack because it'll do more damage that way. I get the other characters we've met, like the princess, Buki, I get her, and I get um, Arlo, the uh, scientist dude. Um, I know we get, at some point, we get all four of them. I think Buki, because she's like a cat woman, can climb the walls. Oh, joy. I think I use it. I use it. I think I use the save point right before him. Yeah. <laughs> I seriously had a moment there where I was like, did I use that save point? I don't remember if I used that save point. Okay. Now I think he can call in other people. If I have to like keep him.
so probably by the time I get to the next save point, I'm going to stop the episode and then we'll, we'll see what comes up. Hatchet in the back. Ouch. I mean, it's still not like Mortal Kombat level brutality, but it's, it's, you know, you have a lot of very graphically dead villagers. <laughs> Dead on a grave. Like, I feel like there's a joke there. I hope these aren't like funerary urns that I'm smashing. I don't want to be like disrespectfully dead. Gun sword, the way that is, is actually kind of clever because it's up in a position to block while firing straight at your target. It's kind of an interesting concept, I think. Totally impractical for like actual use, um, I suppose, because I feel like that would be pretty easy to accidentally fire during combat and shoot yourself. Somewhere that isn't locked up tight. Athlosis. Hey, did you hear about the treasure that's supposed to be hidden in here? Uh, if there is treasure here, it must be invisible. I reckon you'd need to be a magician in order to find it. Yep. Okay, so that's what that is. It's not an ability that I have. Um, as towel. Okay. Cool. Right along. Oh. He's missing his head.
Kind of get the hang of the combos. It's not that bad. Yay, treasure chest. I like swords. I have a small collection myself. Rather, uh, rather enjoy them. It's another totem. Okay. Well, this, you know, it seems like a good place to save here, where I can end the episode. Um, so yeah, we're gonna keep playing. This is a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, you guys. Uh, hope you like Sudeki. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorites. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.